Hi, my name is Sarah and welcome to my channel. So today I'm doing a little bit of a different video. I'm going to be talking about all the cross stitch projects that I've done so far. Um, this doesn't really relate to books though it does a little bit um, which I'll get into it when it comes up. Um, but I have been into cross stitching for about two years now and I really love it. Uh, I've done maybe 20 projects or so and I do it while I'm watching TV or YouTube videos or listening to audiobooks. It is the perfect thing to do like it doesn't take up all of my attention and I definitely need to be doing something while I'm watching TV or listening to an audiobook. Uh, it's great for audiobooks because while I'm listening to a book I can't do anything else involving words usually. So like if I'm playing a video game it can't have any words in it which is hard, kind of hard to find. So cross stitch is perfect because you're just looking at a chart with no words on it. Um, if you don't know what cross stitch is it is a type of needle point editing Sarah here. I filmed this video twice and <laughs> neither time did I properly describe what cross stitching is. So here is the description from Wikipedia. Cross stitch is a form of sewing and a popular form of counted thread embroidery in which X shaped stitches are tiled and used to form a picture. The stitcher counts the threads on a piece of even weave fabric in each direction so that the stitches are uniform in size and appearance. And right now I'll put up a picture of my current project so you can kind of see the grid that is on the fabric as well as what each little X shaped stitch looks like. And also while I'm here because I forgot to mention this as well but this video was inspired by Ash from Books to Ashes. Uh, she said that she would love to see a video of me talking about my cross stitch projects so Thank you for enabling me, Ash. So now I'll just get into all the projects that I've done. I will try to link any of the things that I talk about down below. Uh, I know one of the shops that I got my some patterns from is no longer available, which is really unfortunate, but any of them that I can find, I will put down below. So here we go. The one that I started with was a bunch of mason jars with flowers in it. And this was a kit, so it provided you with the cloth, the pattern, all the floss you would need, the needle, all of that. So basically, you get that kit and you're good to go. Um, and this one I picked because I thought it would be easy, and it wasn't. <laughs> Definitely for my first project, it was a little bit difficult. Um, I learned how bad I am at counting because you're always having to count, like, oh, there's five stitches of this color here. Uh, or two stitches here. I'm terrible at counting. So uh, I learned that through that process. That one also has you mix different colors of the floss. So like one strand of one color and another strand of a different color, which I have not been done since that project. <laughs> I think it came out fine, but I don't have that one anymore because I don't know, just not. Out of all the things I've made, it's not the most impressive or anything. Not really doesn't really fit with the style of the rest of what I like to do. Uh, the second project was also another kit and I don't even know if I have a finished picture of it but I did end up framing it and having it in my room for a little while but I also got rid of it. It is some finches I think in lilacs. Um, it was fine. Uh, I just got it because I was in the middle of my first one and I was like I want to keep doing this so I found that as another kit but there are so many other cool st things that I've made so far, so I didn't need to keep that. One thing that I got into right away um, is making bookmarks. So the first one that I made is this little dragon bookmark, and I think it is adorable. It is kind of thick because there are two layers of fabric, but in like a big book, it definitely works as a bookmark. And the back looks like this. Um, trying to finish the back was the biggest problem of mine but I did stitch the entire thing in one day. The next thing I did was from the game Stardew Valley which is one of my favorite games of all time. Um, it has a very pixelated art style which works great with cross stitch because like each pixel can be a stitch. So this person made four separate patterns, one for each of the seasons um, and the different crops for those seasons in the game and so I just combined all of those patterns together in order to make this. Let me try not to get a glare. Uh, I really like how it turned out. I love the colors. It looks exactly like the game. Um, yeah, I think it looks really nice. 
The next few projects I made as gifts for friends, so if you're watching this, I hope you're still enjoying your cross stitch. <laughs> the first one was a jellyfish uh, pattern. And for this one, I actually went off script, I guess, a little bit and changed up some of the colors because the colors that the original person had picked were not great. So I am happy with how this one came out. The next one I did is a little mystical terrarium. And I adore how this one came out. Um, I just love the colors. I love how like it looks like it's glowing um and this one has a lot of back stitching in it which if you can see the lines of like i think there's black and white in there um that kind of outline it those are not like the regular cross stitch that is in cross stitching uh but a lot of patterns have that to kind of more clearly define different elements and i think it looks really cool on that project but i hate doing it i find it so tedious so I am definitely glad with how that came out. I really haven't backstitched too much since then because I just really don't enjoy it. The next thing I made for a friend was a mermaid skeleton. And I actually had to redo this one because the colors didn't turn out quite right. The colors on the pattern were meant for, I think, white uh, cloth and I ended up doing it out purple. So I had to redo that. But I like how it turned out. And the last gift that I made was a snowman bookmark. I got a sampler of snowmen. So for cross stitch, they have these samplers, which is basically just, they're themed, um, and then they have a bunch of different patterns for that theme. So this one I got had 74 snowmen. So it was super fun picking out the snowman that I was gonna use on this and like designing how I'd put that together. Next up, I have a couple all from the same shop on Etsy. And I just love the style of these. Um, once you see them, you can tell uh, how different they are from the style of the first couple that I did that were from Kits. So this is the first one. Um, I don't think the pattern has a name, but I really like it. And I originally wanted to put them in hoops so that it would be like just the cross stitching. You wouldn't be able to see any of the fabric, but that didn't end up working because they were the wrong size. So I found these wooden discs that I just used to uh, command Velcro them to the wall, and I think that came out really well. Also, I don't know if other people do this uh, with anything, but I I also used to do adult coloring books and the same thing used to happen. But like this one specifically, I remember what I was watching while I was stitching over here. Um, I was watching the K-Drama Princess Hours. <laughs> um, so it was kind of fun to like look at projects and be like, oh, I know what I was watching or listening to while doing that. The next pattern I did from this shop was Saturn 2. This pattern is the one that actually I found the shop through. Um, I just love the colors of it and I did it on black fabric so it kind of stands out a little bit more. Um, I started working on this, this purple color specifically, while watching Are You The One with my brother. <laughs> and the final pattern that I've done from this shop, though I do have some more that I would like to do and they're putting out new ones all the time so I'd love to do that, um, is Pumpkin Castle. And this one I also did on black fabric so it stood out even more. I just love the colors. I love the design. I love everything about it. Um, I have, I will put a picture of how I have these on my bedroom wall kind of as like a gallery wall. Um, so I would love to put more of those up. Maybe different sizes would be cool too. The next one that I did is from the K-Drama Crash Landing on You, which is my favorite, or one of my favorites I should say. And uh, I just love this. Um, I saw the pattern and I was like, I gotta do it because I love them so much and I'm so happy for them. Uh, the, the actors, uh, Hyun Bin and Sonia Jin just got married and they're having a baby and I just want the best for them. It does <laughs> feel a little bit weird that I have a, like a cross stitch of them on my wall, but I think I, I made it either right after they um, announced that they were dating or right before, so yeah. Next up, I made another bookmark, and this I used a sampler as well. So I used a frog sampler. So I have a bunch of different frogs. Um, I tried to make a tassel, but it didn't come out as like loose as I wanted it. So I don't really use this one too often. Now we start getting into some of the bigger projects, but this kind of relates to books. But the first one that I did from this shop is a Visit Lothlorien travel poster. 
Um, <laughs> so all of the ones that I've been doing are Lord of the Rings travel poster, like vintage style. And I just love how it looks. I added some silver threads to it. Um, I'm not sure if that's picking up on camera, but yeah, I really like it. And I think over here I was listening to Royal Assassin by Robin Hobb. And also I will put up a progress gif that I made. So I took pictures of it every so often, definitely not every day. Um, I think it's really cool to see the progress. So after working on that big project, I kind of wanted to take a little bit of a break and work on something smaller. So I put together these three patterns. I believe they're all from the same shop and put them all into one. I did have to edit them a little bit just to make them the same size, but I really like how it came out. Um, I am not too happy with how I finished the edges and everything, so I definitely want to go back and try to fix that. Uh, but it's been like a year and I haven't done that. <laughs> and also, um, all the projects I've shown before this one were all on 14 count fabric, which means that there are 14 squares per inch. Um, and this one is on 18 count, so there are 18 squares per inch. And it's, so it's a little bit smaller stitches. Um, and it was definitely a little bit more of a challenge for me, but I really like how it came out. Next up, we have another one of those Lord of the Rings travel posters, but this one is for Mordor. Um, I love this one. I think the eye looks so cool. I added some gold into the eye as well as into the lava here. Um, because I wanted to try to have each of them kind of stay consistent. But this one, definitely with like these colors, was kind of boring to stitch. But I really like the big chunks of color. And my last completed project. Oh, this one took me six months to do. Um, and normally like something like the, these ones, this took about like less than two months. So it took me six whole months to do this next one. And that would be the flower field from Howl's Moving Castle. So I'll put the picture up and I'll also put in some close up shots of it as well because it just looks so cool. I had been wanting to do a Howl's Moving Castle pattern for a while, but there are just none that I found that I really enjoyed. So I made my own pattern. Um, it was not as hard as I was thinking it was going to be, though I definitely learned a lot from making that and I would do it differently next time if I decide to do it again. Um, I mean, decide to make another pattern, not stitch this again, because I don't think I would stitch it again. I decided to do this on 25 count fabric. So that means that there are 25 squares per inch so super tiny stitches i wanted to do it really small because i think the effect of seeing it look like pixels in a super tiny form just makes it look even more intricate than it already is this project has 40 colors in it all of my other projects so far i think maybe the most has been 15 ish so having so many different colors um and there aren't any really big chunks of one single color Definitely made it more complicated to stitch. Yeah, it just took forever and I had started on the left side So there's really that huge green patch. So I was working on that for probably Two months. I was really questioning myself uh, Like is this even gonna look good and then I got to the building and started to see that coming together and I was like, okay Yes, this is rewarding now <laughs> um and I actually posted my pattern online for this, so I will link it down below if you're interested. Um, be warned, it does take a long time. I am definitely not ready to do a pattern that's gonna take me that long again. Oh, and I will also show a picture of the back because some people are super invested in the back of their projects looking good, and I am not, which you can tell from this picture. <laughs> um, but I think it looks pretty cool. But yes, that is my biggest project so far. I finished that at the end of May, I think, or early June. So since then, I have been working on another one of those Lord of the Rings uh, posters. This one is going to be for the Mines of Moria. So I'm very excited about that one. And I have plans. I have my TV right here and above it. I want to hang up the three of those travel posters uh, on the wall. So as soon as I finish that one, I can get those framed and get that done. But yeah, those are all my projects. Um, I really enjoy cross stitching. I have so much floss, so much fabric, so many patterns that I wanna stitch. I actually recently bought a music stand so that I can hold up my pattern. I have it on this old 
crusty clipboard um, that I would just always lean on a pillow or something. But it's like not stable at all. So I was like, you know what? A music stand is literally made for holding up papers. So I'm going to get that. And then just the other day I realized I have this needle minder, which let me take the needle off of it. It is a little octopus and the, ma the needle just magnetizes to it. So since this is magnetized, I realize it just sticks right to the music stand too. It's the ideal setup. But yes, that is it. I hope to do some more bookish sort of cross stitches in the future. Um, but it's kind of hard because you either have quotes or like the cover or else you're using some sort of like fan art or something. Um, whereas opposed to like TV shows, you can literally just take a screenshot and pull it from that. Um, or like a photo you could take and use that. But for books, it's a little bit harder. Um, but I do kind of want to incorporate crafts a little bit more into my channel. I have been doing some mini DIY house kit things recently. I'll put some pictures up of those. And I've been wanting to use my knowledge from those to make my own book nook, like shelf insert. Um, so I've been wanting to do that, but I just haven't had the time to set that up and everything. But I would like to make a video about it. So if you're interested in that or any other uh, bookish crafts, let me know because I definitely love crafting, even though I'm not always the best at it. But that is it for me today, and I will see you all next time. Bye!